All right, welcome back. Dr. P here, and um, in this lecture video, we will take a look at um, some of the nucleophilic addition reactions to carbonyls. In particular, we'll look at using oxygen compounds as nucleophiles, and uh, we'll look at the formation of hydrates, hemiacetals, and acetals. So before we do that, let's just um, look at, in general, We'll look at the general nucleophilic addition to carbonyls. And when I say carbonyls, I mean aldehydes and ketones, of course. So we could have our carbonyl compound here, aldehyde or ketone. And now remember, this carbon-oxygen bond is polar, so the carbon has a partial positive charge on it, making it um, a good electrophile. That's electron deficient. Oxygen has a partial negative charge, so that's actually a good site for potential protonation. So we can react this with some nucleophile. So let's just call it nuke minus here. And we'll go ahead and boom, get attack, kick the electrons from the, excuse me, the CO double bond up onto the oxygen. And now we have R, C, O, negative charge, R prime, nuke. And now if we have some kind of proton source, then the negatively charged oxygen there can pick up the proton and now we will have RC R prime nuke and OH. And this could react further. Potentially. So, so far, like I mentioned last time, we've seen um, cases where we had nucleophiles like the Grignard react, uh, reagent, um, hydride nucleophiles. But let's turn our attention now to uh, an oxygen nucleophile. And probably the simplest oxygen nucleophile that we can have would be water, um, or you could have hydroxide. So if we have our carbonyl compound here, um, and so this could be an aldehyde or a ketone, so R and R prime, R a hydrogen or alkyl, or aryl, so benzene derivative. We can then, in the presence of aqueous acid or water with a little bit of base, we can get It's called a hydrate. So we've got our um, carbonyl form, then we've got our hydrate form here. Now let's take a look at the mechanism of how this proceeds. And there are two mechanisms, and you should be able to draw both of them, um, actually forwards and backwards. So we may take a little bit of look at the reverse one later on. 
So let's take a look at the mechanism of uh, making a, a hydrate. All right, we'll start here with the acid catalyzed. All right, so we'll go ahead and I'll talk you through this. I'm not just going to show you the steps, but rather talk about how you might come up with them on your own if you are... Um, if you're stumped. All right, so if we have acid present, that is H3O plus, aqueous acid, positive charge. So we have acid present, we have some lone pairs here. The first thing we're going to do is protonate. All right, this, it only makes sense that we protonate because we have acid present and we have some lone pairs on the oxygen. H3O plus, even though it has one lone pair, is not a good nucleophile, so it will not add. Also, because we have acid present, if we added a nucleophile and kicked electrons up onto the oxygen, we would have a negative charge, and we don't want to have negative charges in acid if we can help it. All right, so we will get our C, the bond O, H, Lone pair, positive charge, R prime, and then we've got O, H, H, H2O there. And now it waters an OK nucleophile, and it can add in. And then we'll go ahead and kick those electrons up onto the oxygen. And that will give us now... R, C, R prime, O, H, O, H, H, lone pair, positive charge. Now we need to lastly remove a proton here. So we could have another molecule of water present. How do I know I can have that? Well, H3O plus is aqueous acid, so it's protons in water. So I've got plenty of water. That's my solvent. We'll go ahead and deprotonate, and that will give us now R C R prime O H O H lone pair lone pair, and there's our hydrate. So we have some proton transfers on either side of our nucleophilic addition. The base catalyzed mechanism is similar. Only we're not going to have that initial protonation step. Why not? Well, we've got a strong base. That's a good nucleophile, so we will get nucleophilic attack. If we tried to protonate here, like with water, because we have OH minus in water, if, you, if we tried to protonate here, we'd get a positive charge in the oxygen, and we don't want positive charges when base is present. Okay, so remember, in general, no negative charges in acid, no positive charges in base. Okay, those are my Dr. P's words of wisdom from last semester. Remember we talked about um, acid and base uh, catalyzed ring opening of epoxides? It's the same sort of thing here. We've got acid and base catalyzed versions of a nucleophile attacking a carbonyl. All right, anyway, let's go ahead and get our nucleophilic attack. So we've got a good nucleophile, 
and we'll get those electrons being pushed up onto the oxygen. Negative charge there, R prime, OH. And now I can have water come along, and the water can be deprotonated. And now I've got R, C, R prime, O, H, lone pair, lone pair, O, H, lone pair, lone pair. There we go. Okay, so again, there's our, our hydrate. Okay. So, one second here. My computer has frozen for a second here. I do not know what is going on. There we go. That's better. Okay. Just wanted to make sure it was still recording. All right. So let's take a look at this reaction. This is the mechanism, and you will want to be able to do this mechanism. Um, let's go back. Actually, let's go back and revisit um, some of what I had said here. Um, this is an equilibrium process, okay? All of these steps here are reversible. I could start with my hydrate, I could protonate, I could have my, my H2O leave, and then I could um, then deprotonate there and get the reverse reaction. So, some equilibrium notes. For ketones, K is going to be less than 1. So K, our equilibrium constant, is going to be less than 1. So ketones favor the carbonyl species, the keto species. For aldehydes, K is approximately equal to 1. So you get about a 50-50 mixture of, of the aldehyde and the hydrate. That essentially is saying that aldehydes tend to be more reactive towards nucleophilic addition than ketones do. We can actually make use of that later on. For formaldehyde, our K is actually greater than 1. In fact, Formaldehyde, aqueous formaldehyde, is known as formalin, and it's mostly the hydrate, not the aldehyde form. And then for the compound called chloral, where one of the hydrogens and formaldehyde is replaced by a chlorine, um, our uh, K here is much greater than 1. It's primarily the, the hydrate. It's just a few little notes there, but this is kind of what I want to want to emphasize here is that for ketones, equilibrium favors the carbonyl. For aldehydes, it actually is more of a 50-50 mix. So aldehydes are a bit more reactive, and we'll make use of that a little later on. All right. Well, we lo looked at the addition of water, because really what are we adding to our net addition is H2O, H-O-H, H2O, that's our net addition. What if instead of using water as a nucleophile, we used an alcohol? Well, then we would get um, something called a hemiacetal or an acetal depending on how far the reaction went and what kind of conditions we have. So using alcohol nucleophiles. Right, so our reaction would be our aldehyde or ketone here. And we'll go ahead and then treat this with 
acid, so H plus and an alcohol. So I'll just call that R double prime OH. Or R double prime O minus and R double prime OH. So we can either use acid, H plus, and our alcohol, or the equivalent alkoxy, alkoxide rather, alkoxide and alcohol. So it's, it's basically the same reaction only done in uh, alcohol instead of um, water. And what do we get? Well, initially we get what's called a hemiacetal. Now that can react further, but only in the presence of acid. And then we will go all the way to the acetal. And we'll take a look at how that occurs um, in, uh, in, just a, in just a minute here. Let me see. All right. Now, um, you know, I think just in terms of looking at the paper I've got here, why don't we do the base catalyzed version first? So in base, We'll have R, C, R prime, double bond O, and then we'll have R, o, R double prime, O minus. And that guy is going to attack just like our OH minus attacked before. And we'll get R, C, O minus, O, R double prime, R prime over there. And then I've got HOR double prime, my alcohol, I can deprotonate that. And now I will get RCR prime, OR, oops, sorry, H, that's an H there. OR double prime there. Sorry, that is a hydrogen H. And that's our hemiacetal. Okay, I'm just going to stop there. All right, now why does it stop there? Well, the problem is now we can't get any additional reaction. Um, another molecule of our uh, base will not add in to do an SN2 type reaction. Things are basically a little too cluttered for that. <coughs> Excuse me. Put some water here, sorry. All right. And anyway, the OH minus here is a poor leaving group. So these reactions will stop here. So in base, we can make a hemiacetal base and water will hydrolyze a hemiacetal back to a, um, a carbonyl, but we can't go all the way to the acetal unless we have acid present. So let's take a look at that. So in acid. All right. So let's go ahead and we've got R, C, R prime, double bond O. And I've got my acid present. And you're like, wait, Dr. P, where did this come from? That's my H plus. In an alcohol, I have H plus and it's attached to my R double prime OH. Just like in water, H plus is actually attached to H2O to make H3O plus. Anyway, if you just want to write H plus, that's fine. All right, so I get my 
protonation here. Often I'll refer to this protonation as activation because we are now activating the carbonyl group. Because if we drew a resonance structure, we'd have a resonance structure, structure with a positive charge on carbon and neutral on oxygen. So, you know, really the, this sort of activates this, this bond, um, making the carbon even more uh, electrophilic. So let's go ahead and add in a molecule of our nucleophile here. R, C, R prime, O, H, O, R double prime, H, positive charge. And then I can have a molecule of the alcohol come along and take off that proton. And this will give me now R C R prime O H O R double prime. But I could have another proton. Okay, here is my hemiacetal. I could have another proton come along. I'm just going to call it H plus this time. Yes, I know I did it one way this way, and now I'm being lazy. It's okay. I'm allowed to be lazy. I'm 51 years old. O, H, H, positive charge, O, R, double prime. Now, since I've protonated this, it is a good leaving group. So I could have a pair of electrons from the alcohol over here come down to form a double bond and kick off that H2O. So now I'm going to get R, C, R prime, double bond, O, R double prime, lone pair positive charge, plus H2O. Well, what do I have here? This looks an awful lot like, kind of like the carbonyl I had here, positive charge on the oxygen. It's not a proton on it, it's an, actually an alkyl group, but that's okay. So let's go ahead and take R double prime O H, one pair, one pair. Now we'll do a nucleophilic attack here, get our um, uh, sorry, push our uh, electrons from the CO double bond onto the oxygen. And so I'll have R, O, H, that should be R double prime because it's that guy there, carbon, R, R prime, O, R double prime. Okay, and this guy has a positive charge. And now another molecule of HOR double prime can come along and deprotonate, giving us our final product here, which is, of course, our acetal. It's actually kind of cool when I do this in, in, in lecture in a big, <laughs> across a big board, one of the big, you know, whiteboards like in, in um, the lecture room. And uh, it just goes, you know, a, a long ways across the board, a little bit harder on a piece of paper like this. Okay. So this is our um, acetal formation. Really the key here is that we make a good leaving group here. And so we have here, this guy here is a good leaving group. And it will then leave. So we can get a protonation, nucleophilic attack, another proton transfer, 
another proton transfer, our good leaving group can leave, then we have another nucleophilic attack and a proton transfer, and now we have the acetal. So base only gets you this far, the hemiacetal. But acid will get you all the way to the acetal because in acid you could protonate other oxygen and that makes a good leaving group. And that allows that to leave and then another molecule of alcohol can come in. So base stops you here. Acid enables you to get here. Conversely, if you took your acetal and put it in base, nothing would happen. If you put it in aqueous water, or sorry, aqueous acid, so H3O plus, you could protonate one of these and make it a good leaving group. It could leave and get replaced by water. And all of, this, all of a sudden you're doing the reverse reaction. So that's an important thing to note, is that um, acetals do not hydrolyze Hydrolyze, hydrolysis rea is reacting with water. In base. Okay, so they will actually hydrolyze in acid, but not uh, not in base. So that's something important to to note. All right. Now, we can actually make use of that. How are we going to make use of that? In synthesis, of course. Oh no, Dr. P, not synthesis. Yes, synthesis. And what I'm going to talk about is something I talked about a little bit last semester, um, and that is uh, using protecting groups in synthesis. As I said last semester, good chemists always use protection when they do synthesis. So let's say we had the following. And we wanted to Just reduce one of these um, carbonyls uh, to a ketone, I mean, a, uh, an alkane, sorry. What could we do? Well, we can make use of the fact that we know aldehydes are more reactive than ketones. So, We could go ahead and do something like two equivalents of ethanol, ETOH and H plus, and that will give us now I could do a reduction. All right. Now, I don't want to do a Clemenson because that uses aqueous HCl and it would just hydrolyze this guy back to the aldehyde and we'd end up um, reducing both. So instead I'll do the wolf Kishner. So hydrazine H2NNH2 in potassium hydroxide and base. And then lastly, I can H2O, H plus. We'll hydrolyze that now with our acid and we'll go back to our product. There we go. Now, what if I wanted to do the other? What if I wanted to do the other way? What if I wanted to do
if I wanted to do that. Well, here again, I could make use of, and I have to be very careful doing this, but I could make use of my Uh, more reactive aldehyde and use one equivalent of sodium borohydride. So for every, I would use, you know, a quarter of a mole of sodium borohydride for every mole of this that I had. And that should give me, um, oh, you know what? I take that back. I don't think I want to do it that way. No, let's not do this one. Sorry, let's do this. One equivalent H2NNH2, KOH, and heat. I'm not sure absolutely this would work. Uh, th this other one would have just given me the alcohol, so don't worry about that. But my, my point is, is that remember, the aldehydes are more reactive than the ketones. So if I control how much stuff I'm adding, it should preferentially react at the aldehyde instead of the ketone. That's why this protection scheme works here, because the aldehyde is more reactive, so it will tend to form the, um, the acetal, ketone won't, and now I can reduce the ketone. Here I'm trying to make uh, take advantage of the increased reactivity of the aldehyde. The only problem is these conditions are pretty reactive, so I might get a bunch of that guy reacting too. So, yeah, I don't know. Not sure this is the best uh, best approach here. So, um, Dr. P, not too sure about this. All right. Um, but again, you know, if you're doing a, uh, a synthesis problem and you've got a couple of carbonyls, or you've got a carbonyl and something else, and you want to protect the carbonyl, make an acetal. One great um, way that you can protect a carbonyl is to do something like, let's say this, I'll just say R, R prime. If I use actually ethylene glycol, so this is a diol here, and uh, two carbon diol, this is great because I just have to add one equivalent of that. Why just one equivalent? Well, it's got two alcohols in it. So instead of trying to add two separate molecules of ethanol or methanol, I'll just add my one and I've got my nice little protected ring there, and I'm good to go. All right. So work on those mechanisms. Practice those mechanisms. Hydrate formation, hemiacetal formation, acetal formation, acid catalyzed and base catalyzed. Um, I, I mean, for the, the hydrate, hemiacetal. Acetal formation is only acid catalyzed. And think about how to use these uh, use acetals as protecting groups in synthesis. And we'll do some practice problems like this, I think, in class. All right. I think that's probably enough for now. And uh, everyone stay safe out there. I will see you later. Bye now.